is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I am so excited. I have a new friend of mine. He was gave me the blessing of being on what was to me one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. Henry Kaminsky, he's the brand doctor, and I think the interview went so well as we both share an idea about frequency. Oh yeah. And we both are old enough not to just buy into the amplification and perpetuation of content, but actually the quality of content. Yeah. And how do you brand quality content, but even first, how do you create it, capture it, et cetera? So let's go back a little bit on just the background of branding and your philosophy of how you've learned to brand things and then move forward and say, all right, now that we know your philosophy that you've built over the last 30 years, What do we do moving forward with this ever-growing, ever-expanding universe of 4.2 billion people to brand to? Yeah, so branding, in my opinion, is the, is the gut feeling that people get when they interact with your brand, your business, and yourself. So that's branding at its core. And those, that relationship has changed when you said your company, yourself. It, the value of those have changed, in my opinion, from when it used to be we only we used to brand companies. Mm, now we're right. branding people. Way bigger now, right? Yeah, now we're branding people, and I think it's very important. I teach all my brand accelerator clients that you have to start getting out from behind the logo and behind the the fancy website because everybody's... Well, my business is the team name or organization. Yeah. Right? It's not the NBA, it's not the Clippers, it's Chris Paul. Right. <laughs> so how do you differentiate yourself nowadays? It's you. People forget the X factor is themselves. And so you do a great job with this on social media. You know, you're, you're out there full blast and you're just create, you're a content monster. And that's what I'm telling my clients to do. They have to start creating tremendous amounts of content and then sift through the nuggets of quality because not everything's gonna be great. Right, and, and for you, sure. The, the attention spans these days are what, three seconds. So you have to, you know, you have to make sure that you're putting out content that's relevant to your offer and relevant to the people that you wanna serve. How do you get them over, you know, I coach a lot of people as well in this aspect, and I think the biggest inhibitor is the one that I had, which was, hey, people are making fun of me, laughing at me, scoffing at me, going like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you're not a brand, right? And I think when you're coming from a small to mid-sized business and you're telling someone, no, 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 you are the X factor, you know, just get there. Other people, they'll applaud you eventually. How do you get them over that hump? I tell them to interview other people. I tell them to start to create a, a team around you so that you don't feel so awkward in front of the camera. It's not all selfies. It's though. not hey, all, everybody exactly, in the internet that get, world. That gets really awkward. Our mutual friend Gary Vaynerchuk said to me when I was first starting out, you know, I said, I, I have a tendency to over talk people. I have a tendency to, to just jump in and, 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 and cut people off. Well, Gary doesn't have any of those tendencies. I know. <laughs> and one of the things he told me to do was start interviewing people and start listening more. And when you start to listen more, you start to get the secrets. And, and, and that's the secrets that you, you leverage to create content. Everybody wants to know, well, how do I know what my audience's challenges and pains are? Well, you have to be the researcher. Nobody wants to do that because it's not sexy. Right. So I'm in there looking at Google reviews, you know, for books that my clients read. I'm looking, I'm spying on Facebook groups to see where my clients are hanging out and what they're talking about. What questions are they asking? And then I just create content on those questions. It's that simple. But people, I think what it is, people let their egos get the best of them. And they're so worried about what other people think about them that it's preventing them to create the value that they need to actually attract the right client. Right, and they're not asking, even to the point where I've been doing this now three years, and one of the constructive criticisms that Gary gives me in his coaching to me was, Dave, you gotta ask for more things, right? Because I'm so I'm so hell-bent on making sure that everything I give is free, which is fine, yeah. right? To give the courses and my books, I pay for shipping. You know, that's just who I am and what I wanna do with it. Yeah. But it's okay to have an ask and ask people, hey, share my content or text me at this number, 949-298-2905, right? Or to have an ask in there. And I think beyond being laughed at, scoffed at, and snickered at, and that worry that what are people gonna think? They think I'm Tony Robbins or you know whatever. I think there's another side of you know either I don't know what to ask for or I'm afraid to ask. Right, 
So you can't be afraid to ask, and you can't assume that your audience knows what to do next. Right. Right? You can't assume. That's such a good point. You can't assume that. So at, after every post on Instagram or YouTube, it's, hey, check out this next video, or let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your arguments are. I would love to debate this with you. Don't just keep blowing smoke up my ass. Yeah. Like, I want to know where you, where you differ. Because that's where the that's where the magic happens, right? So you have to you have to ask. And one of the things that you kind of put me on to when we first connected was you said, "Hey, did you, have you checked out my free course yet?" And I went in there and I watched every single video, and I was impressed that it was absolutely free, and it was better than most of the courses I ever paid for that were a <laughs> thousand plus dollars, right? And I said, "Look at this guy. He's creating bingeable content." So no video was over maybe eight, nine minutes, which yeah. I thought was very strategic. And it led me to the next video. And I wanted to watch every single video in that little mini course. So I did the same thing. You know, that's how I'm, that's how I'm doing. And I'm not asking, here's another thing. I'm not asking for an email anymore. This is completely ungated. Yeah. So I was, I was reading this book recently, uh, Fanocracy, mm. phenomenal book. Did you ever read it? Fan Fanocracy. No, they did no. this study about the Grateful Dead how the Grateful Dead let people record their concerts and let everybody do it. And even the vendors in the stands, they gave away those tie-dye shirts with the, yeah. right? They gave them away and people would throw 50s and 100s at the, at the vendors just because like it was a one of a kind shirt or they're never gonna be at that concert again, right? So they did this study and the study was what content is gonna get shared more? The ones that, the, the content that's gated that, you're, that you need an opt-in for, like an email and a name, or the content that's free. 50% more shares with the content that was free. Yeah. Because today's privacy is, is everybody's big on privacy, dude. Look, I, I'm not afraid to give my secrets away. And one of the secrets that was created by that guy to your left over there, and I thought it was genius, he said, in our genre, for what we do, yeah. right, our expertise of what we do, let's go do research and see what people are charging for. And, and you nailed it when you said, Dave, I've taken courses for thousands of dollars wow. that are worse than what you gave me for free. You know why? Because I went out and did the research. I was more interested than interesting. I found the genre of courses that, that I know I can teach on. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more coming, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm gonna give away for free. And I didn't know it was fanocracy. <laughs> But that's what exactly what it was, is somehow inherently I knew that eventually, and I just did a podcast with the fat Jewish. I saw that. It was right? That was he's awesome. he's the king of fanocracy. Yeah. Right? He oh, was, yeah. So not only did he build his fanhood, but then he went to his fanhood and said, what do you guys want to buy? And they said, rosé wine in a can, and he ends up selling it for $100 million. <laughs> that's genius. One thing I love about him, though, is he does not give a damn. He votes for himself. That's it. Yeah. And, th and that's what people need to understand. I'm turning 40 this year, <laughs> right? And it's, it's a big number for me. Is dude. it? Yeah, it's a big number I'm for me. i man. That's a baby number. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so I say to myself, like, I'm only, I got, I'm only on this planet for a few more, I call it, a few more years, yeah. right? And I need to, so I have a two and a half year old son. And my big push is this. Sooner or later, he's going to be old enough to Google my name. Mm. And I want him to be proud of what he reads and watches. I'm in. And that is, that is my drive. That is my drive. I'm a big fan of the, Br the Bronx Tale, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you know the guy that was in here, Mike Momula, he's in Bronx Tale. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, my God. How funny. <laughs> so, long story short, the big, the big topic of uh, uh, the big... The big picture of that story was the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. And not to go too deep into my backstory, but my parents tried for 16 years to have me. They, my, my mom had, God rest her soul, she had issues. Finally gets a minor surgery, gets me back, gets me 16 years later. Now she's telling all her girlfriends that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a miracle child and it took 16 years to have me. I'm thinking at six years old that... It takes 16 years to have a that, that, that's all it right? takes. Right? That, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, women that. are pregnant for 16 years. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so then... That come create a big problem, by the way. Right. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Uh, and then two years into my life, I almost die of hyponatremia. Just lack of nutrients. I lost all the salt in my body. Wow. And uh, they, they rushed me to the hospital, got me back. And uh, ever since I heard that story growing up, I said, I'm here, I'm here on borrowed time. So I'm going to make the best of it. And my big focus in my brand is this. I want to help entrepreneurs level up their standards and scale their expertise. 
I just happen to do that through brand strategy, brand design, and helping people create beautiful brands that truly represent the value that they deliver. I see a lot of people putting out stuff that doesn't truly represent them, and they think it's the best thing because they don't know any better. Yeah. That drives not, me nuts. You know, and that word authentic gets pushed around, and I tell people all the time, get away from authenticity and think about your frequency, right? Because authenticity, authenticity can be manipulated, it can be oversold, back end sold. You know, people pretend so many different authentic things, and it's when it's manipulated, the frequency yeah. is off. Well, you know what it is when they, f when you finally meet that person. I've met plenty of those people online, and you finally meet them in person, and the frequency is way off. It's so noticeable for oh, me. Yeah. That's why, like, I picked up on your energy when you were on my show, and then when I walked in this door today, that energy was no different. Right on. Right? And yeah, it should be. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for in a fellow entrepreneur or a, a colleague in this space, right? I don't care about anything else. I want that frequency to be the same. And people are going to pick up on it. You think you're fooling somebody, but yeah. you're not. And which brings up kind of the last issue is, you know, with that frequency, there's a numbers game that people don't understand. They're impatient about the numbers. They're looking for the wrong things of how to build a brand. When you're giving advice, and I, I see people that are brand consultants like yourself, we have to be able to manage expectations of how long of a journey it is to build a brand, <laughs> right? And what investment it's gonna take. Because, you know, there's anomalies to everything, right? Kobe Bryant was an extraordinary basketball player at the age of 17, right. I get it. Right. But how many of those guys are alive or dead, right? Very few. So moreover though, you know, it's a matter of time of how this takes. And you need to prepare people for the yeah. fact, you know, I prepare them by saying, look, I just want two people that will tell two people a year. Right? That's, That's my brand consulting. Uh, but there's also an investment. Yes. You know, and I have friends, extraordinary friends that have invented extraordinary things. And they're like, how the heck did you build this brand? And I'm, I, you know, I'm you're much more successful. I have a better story than you. You probably do, bro, but you don't tell it every day. I know. Right? And, you, and if you do, you're not telling it. In you're, you're bragging or over, you're not yeah. telling the illuminating how hard it is. Everyone thinks you're an overnight success. You're not talking about the 17 and a half years yeah. when you're at the bottom of Nordstrom's escalator, handing it out 12 hours a day and your feet are sweaty. Yeah. That's what people want to hear. Yeah. They don't want to hear how you exited for $40 million like it was overnight. Yeah, yeah. People, I have a good friend who taught me actually graphic design. We're sitting having dinner to one day. And he says, you know, and I was telling him the story, like, so at 10 years old, my, my, my mom didn't want to be a mom anymore, so she took off. And my father was left to raise me by himself. And he was a UPS shop steward for 33 years. Yeah. And he, he did oil changes, and he, he had me mowing lawns at 13, and he had me busting my butt, you know, since the age of 13. And, you know, I used to go to school. I went to a Catholic school, and, you know, the laundry was never done. So I went to school with rings around my collar. I actually had my dad get me into the Cub Scouts because I liked their uniforms better because it hid, not because I wanted to be a Cub Scout, it's because it hid the dirt around my neck. Wow. So I'm telling my, my, my best friend this story and he says, you know, Henry, you need to tell this story more because people see you and they see what you're doing today and they get a mixed vibe from you because they never heard that story. They have no idea where you've come from. So to your point, I've been out there much more these days just telling the, telling the, the, the war stories. Yeah, the illumination. And, yeah. All right, last quick question. You're a branding expert. What's the number one piece of advice to brand a personal brand? Oh, man. Best piece of advice to brand a personal brand. Know who you're serving. Nice. That's it. Yeah, know your audience, because there's a big audience out there. That's it. Too many people go in and they try to serve everybody, and I've heard you say it a thousand times. Sounds cliche, but when you try to serve everybody, you serve nobody, but it gets a lot easier to speak to one person. So we serve the ClickFunnels community. I specialize, you right. know Russell Brunson? Of course. Yeah, he's a client of mine for two and a half years. And when I got into ClickFunnels, I learned everything I could about ClickFunnels, and I became a reputable ClickFunnels designer. And I just focused on those folks, because they're struggling. ClickFunnels is a phenomenal tool, yeah. but people don't know how to use it. And it gets a bad rap, because the people that don't know how to use it are going out there trying to make a quick buck, and it's, it's, it's tarnishing the name. So I'm on a mission 
to help this community design funnels that truly represent their personal brands, their brands, so that they can really represent so themselves. Yeah. So again, niching down and understanding who you're serving. I would say there's a reason that lady that opens toys has millions and millions of subscribers because she knows her niche. It's it. Right? It's it. Well, I love that. Uh, I really appreciate, Henry, you coming in. This is The Brand Doctor and here with Dave Meltzer, Entrepreneurs, The Playbook. <laughs>